I was so shy when I started lecturing. Professor Mullins went out of his way to make me feel at home. Oh, so he was your tutor? No, no, his college was affiliated to mine. Before he retired, he was an authority on ancient Rome. <laughs> Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your shears. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> A little island of calm. That's enough. Natives don't look too friendly. But apparently he's a squatter, been here for ages. Harmless enough. So much for your island. Looks like the tide's coming in. Oh, I hope not. The professor loves this place. There he is. Oh, dear. Hi, Prof. Is that a fine bottle of wine approaching? <laughs> oh, dear. Have I ever let you down? <laughs> <laughs> I've brought a friend with me. Oh, not another of your young men, is it? You know I never approve. No, no, don't worry. Huh? Uh, Professor James Mullins, meet Laura Time. Ah, ah, another horny-handed daughter of the soil. <laughs> That means I'm a gardener, then you're absolutely oh, well, right. Well, 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 yeah. It's that callous blend of coarseness and creativity. Not like her. She has the painted talons of a harpy. Professor, shh. You used to like Paula. She's up to something here, I know. Ah, I'll get the corkscrew. Is he that friendly to all his neighbors? Hush now. Tiberius, keys. Horny handed daughter of the soil. Mm. Ah, Bordeaux. God. Saint Julien, I say. Given your budget, nineteen ninety seven, perhaps. 10 out of 10. <laughs> what will you do when you've tasted it? Tell us who trod the grapes. <laughs> Robbed of my sight, one learns to depend on the other senses, here especially. Fragrance of my flowers, the sound of the trains, the traffic, my windmill. They're the only guide I need. Tiberius gets a well-earned rest down here. Well, it's very odd, Croft. I can see why you called. The leaves on the begonia are all blotchy and misshapen, and it's the same with the rosemary. I know. There's a general yellowing and spotting of these wallflowers, but the daffs are fine. Well, that's very strange. That means there's no pattern. Bit of a conundrum. Is it just your plot affected? No, it's like a biblical plague. Devastating some plants, sparing others. It's an awful worry. I plan to spend my retirement pottering on here. What the hell do you think you're doing coming around here? Is that Burnley causing a ruckus? He's a scruffy young man and his plot's a mess. That sounds like Kelly the Builder he's arguing with. Oh, and Paul is getting involved now. Brawls, squatters, torrent. I shall have some serious words at the EGM. EGM? A lockman committee tonight, you must come along. Stay at my house, I'll introduce you to everyone, and we'll formulate a plan for attacking this blight. As opposed to each other. Oof. There's that man, Burnley. The professor says he's running a business from his plot, and that's totally illegal. And now here's the builder. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Would you like to take a seat? Who is that? Hugo Dainty. Splendid chap. A benefactor worthy of his great-grandfather. As you know, the initial purpose of this EGM was to discuss the blight, or whatever it is, which has recently afflicted the allotments. My First healthy stalks I've seen today. What? Once your eyes are on. However, events have overtaken this somewhat. In recent days, Mr. and indeed Mrs. Kelly's construction company has made an offer to buy the allotment land 
My work commitments mean I can't devote adequate time to management of the site, so I've provisionally accepted the bid. No. You're a busy young man, Hugo. I know it's tempting to unburden yourself, but I think you've forgotten Article 7 of the Foundation Charter, set down by Sir Herbert Dainty, your great-grandfather, the philanthropist who first gave over the land for allotment use. Will someone wake me up when Stanley Unwin gets the point? My apologies for overtaxing your simian brain, Paula. <laughs> Simply put, land use cannot be changed without tenants' consent. I presume Mr. Kelly is intending to develop the site. Well, I'm not spending two million pounds to grow sudden sprouts. I'm building another apartment block. I wasn't aware of this foundation charter, Professor Mullins, but in view of your excellent academic credentials... That stuff is credentials. I'm offering £10,000 to anyone who wants to sell. Show of hands. End of story. You know what I mean? Bribery is clear enough in any patois, sir. Do you fear debate? I don't fear anything, old man. You shut your mouth, you. Oh, yeah. And are you going to make it? I knew it. I knew oh, you were no, so they're going to start fighting, fighting again. That's why you bored those dirty great holes. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I'm not losing my plot. Not without a fight. Yeah. You lost the plot years ago. Selling sandwiches might work for you, Bernie, hmm. but I'll take the money. Please, we can resolve this easily enough. A secret ballad. We agreed? It's very commanding, isn't it? I'd go over the top for him any time. <clears throat> I hope you don't mind counting, but as the only neutrals. Oh, we'd be delighted. I expect Professor Mullen's objections came as a bit of a blow. In the last year alone, I've put in new fences, security, a sprinkler system. It's not the money, it's the time involved. Well, two million will buy you a lot of time. Yes, it is a tidy sum. I'll have a very nice car and a very nice home already. Perhaps if you're free for dinner tomorrow, I could show you. Well, that would be... Uh, um, perhaps um, we'd uh, better start counting these. Hi, the returning officer. Well, seems the nose have it. <laughs> Give us that here, you. A bottle of their finest champagne for celebration, my dear. <laughs> Talk about the blind leading the blind. You almost be bleeding mad. Celebrate? You've cost me 10,000 quid, you silly old sod. Not I. The people have spoken. <laughs> what, the people who'd rather have vandalised sheds and scabby veg than 10 grand? <laughs> you, uh, saved the day there, mate. Your enthusiasm for saving these allotments were better invested tending. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's just I've been a bit busy with my sandwich business. Mostly from your plot. And now you've turned the whole place into a glorified warehouse. Cease these business activities, or I'll act. Oh. Mind. More champagne for us? <laughs> <laughs> plant damage last night. I know the random spread rules out viruses, but what about soil contamination? From the building site. Mm. Those holes could have turned up something nasty. We should take some samples. Professor Mullins has already left. He said he's seeing a solicitor for lunch, but he wanted to put in a couple of hours at the allotment first. Well, we'd better get moving. I've got to get back early for my dinner date. Mm. Perhaps we'll get to breakfast on the way. Oh. How'd your meeting go last night? 
I a Kelly son of by this land. The Lopins endure. You, sir, will not. Rest assured, I shall take every effort to have you and your mangy curs removed from here at the soonest opportunity. <laughs> oh, keys, Tiberius. Keys. Ah, good boy. Boy. Hello? Tonight? Laura, I'm only going to dinner. With Hugo? <laughs> well, the professor seems to like him. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? <laughs> Tiberius? What's, what's up, Tiberius? Broth? What's the matter? Broth? Where's your master then? Oh. Broth, where are you? It's upsetting, but this was an accident waiting to happen. It wasn't an accident. You're saying someone pushed him? But of course that's what she's saying. The professor knew every inch of this site. I just can't believe... Wait. There's no sign of a struggle. The only footprints are yours and his. And the only witness who was there at the... Witness? He calls himself Jangles. Lives in the caravan over there. Well, what did he say? Saw Mullins arrive, thought he heard a scream later on. Looked over, but saw no one. But that's hardly conclusive. You can see a hundred yards all around from over there. There's no hiding place. Short of jumping down the hole with the old man. Sorry, but when a blind man goes wandering around a field full of holes, you don't call out the murder squad. And there was no one else around? Nobody. Look for yourself. I'd have seen. Well, why didn't you investigate if you heard a scream? I wasn't sure what it was. Really? Forgive me, but you don't seem very concerned. Why should I be? From the minute I arrived, he wanted me gone. I'd done nothing to him. But that doesn't mean... You people, you think because I live like this, I'm capable of anything. But you're wrong. I just want to be left alone. That's all I ever wanted. That's a reliable witness. We should probably go. No. We promised the professor we'd save his plants. It's the least we can do for him now. All right. I'll get some samples from the holes, and we can cross-check it against this soil. Unless I've gone mad. The wallflowers were over there yesterday. Well, they can't have moved over. No, they've changed places with the rosemary. The bikini and the daffs have done the same thing. Well, unless I had too much beer yesterday. Well, <laughs> all the professor's crossing his plants with triffids. The windmill? Yeah, uh, that. That was definitely down by the shed yesterday. I, I distinctly remember. What's going on here? I think I know. Now, trust me, if this works, it'll answer a lot of questions. All right. All right, now, the professor arrives mm -hmm. and Tiberius leads him now you'll be Tiberius. Right, yeah. I'm not going down on all fours. Okay. Mm. 
Ah, oh, yeah. So tethered. Right. Now then, don't you do anything unless I'm in danger. <laughs> right now. Professor turns, walks towards the shed to get his tools. Rosemary. No, that should be wallflowers. Lavender? Sorry, my soap. No, the rosemary is on on the left. Wait a minute. Ah, begonia. Right. Okay. Bluebells. Right. No, that's wrong. That's not right. Windmill. So I must be going towards the shed. Stop! Stop. But it was an accident, surely. It was meant to look like one. Someone rearranged the plot in such a way as to lead the professor to stumble into the hole. Good heavens. Do the police know? Not yet. Well, we need more proof and a suspect. You know you can rely on me to assist you in any way I can. Any ideas yet? Well, there's Jangles. Laura trusts him, but I think he's unstable. He's been a mess ever since he left the family's brokerage house. He was a stockbroker. Seems a bit rough around the edges. As good as what he did, we paid him the biggest bonus in the family's history. So what happened? He loved the high life. Bought so much jewellery, we called him Mr. Bo Jangles. Trouble was he loved women too until his wife found out. She left him? In a way, killed herself. Took the poor devil over the edge and he quit. Became the vagrant you see now. Ironically enough, he pitched up at Dad's allotment. Didn't have the heart to evict him. So you inherited your father's business? One and only Frank Dainty, city legend. Tough act to follow. Seemed to manage. It was hard at first. Soon found myself in merger talks with the Japanese company, Takasone. <laughs> but I stuck to his guiding principles. Turned out all right? Absolutely. We made a packet. Dad would have been proud. So you think your father was right to trust Jangles? Well, that I'm not so sure of. I mean, can you imagine the pent-up resentment in him with Professor Mullins trying to evict him at every turn? No, Rosemary, I think you're absolutely right to suspect him. Um... New Zealand Cabernet, OK? Rosemary wants us to keep an eye on Jangles. So pretend you're a bloodhound, OK? But I think she's wrong. Jangles wasn't the only one with something against your master. Come on. Yeah. I know, I know you loved him, but he could be a cantankerous old cuss at times, couldn't he? I mean, you put Burnley's back up last night at the meeting, remember? And he's had a running feud with a woman on this plot. Kelly, come on, quick, quick, quick. Returning to the scene, eh? You're not a gardener, do you know how? Relax. I want my money. And you'll get it. Once I've secured the land, we'll both be queens in. Sure, everyone will be uh, happy. Always jam tomorrow with you. Uh, don't be like this, Paula. Here. Little bit in account. <laughs> I suppose it'll do. For now. Jesus. You're worse than my bank manager. Not bad look of mine. Kelly and Paula Scott cooked this up. He has the motive, she has the knowledge. She rearranged the plot, and he is going to pay her when he gets the land. And with Professor Mullins dead, they can force another vote. All right. Do you know Hugo grows these in his house in the country? Mm. Aren't they beautiful? Smashing. And another thing, they are having an affair. 
I stayed last night until the windows of the shed steamed up. I had to cover your eyes, didn't I? Rosemary Boxer. Hmm? Let's see if you can sign that, please. What is it? Boxer. Um, condolences on the death of Dr. Mullins. Da, da, da. Uh -huh. uh, a will? You've been named sole beneficiary of his estate, totaling 478,766 pounds? 32p. The inheritance must have come as quite a shock. Oh, well, yes, it did a bit. I mean, we had been quite close, and uh, I knew his family were wealthy, and, and he had made money in TV. Eccentric and irascible, cardboard cut-out historian. This place doesn't well, matter, mate. Just I'm not good you, enough. There's nothing wrong with the sandwiches. Oh, Mr. Burnley, selling your sandwiches here. I didn't know you worked for Hugo Dainty. Oh, no, no. I'm a lot more important than Hugo. In fact, I'm the most important person in this office. Oh, really? Oh, was that an unhappy customer? Yeah, I'm afraid so. But that's my supplier's fault, though. See, the problem is, when a paying punter says it's hard cheese, well, it's me that ends up in a pickle. I'm, uh, sorry about the old boy, by the way. Horrible way to go. See ya. Intolerable, isn't it? I'm stuck in this broom cupboard while my suite's being refurbished. It's being feng shui as we speak. <sighs> I dabble in that myself sometimes. Well, can't we see it? Uh, well, I haven't seen it myself yet. You'll have to be patient. It's a uh, virtue you're going to have to cultivate. I encouraged Professor Mullins to invest with us, but it was his decision to choose the highest yield portfolio. It ties up his money for some years. Given his age, I strenuously advised against it, but he was adamant. Well, what was he going to live on? while this matured. Look, it's, um, it's all explained in there. I think I'll need several of these after everything that's happened. Oh, you'll soon get used to it. I've found one's outgoings are just to suit one's pocket with alarming speed. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Oh, I know. Twenty years ago, I'd have known just what to do with the money, but now I... <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think you're the most vibrant woman I've ever met, if you don't mind my saying so. <laughs> you know, I, I've always found energy and enthusiasm very attractive. I'm sure I'm not the only man. Oh, well, you are at the moment, I'm afraid. Really? Mm -hmm. Can't believe there isn't a significant other lurking somewhere. Uh, no, I've lost a few on the way, mind you. <laughs> you make it sound like a lucky escape. No, I think it was. I'm not a very good judge of character where men are concerned. Present company accepted. I'm surprised there isn't a Mrs. Dainty lurking around. Well, there was. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry, Sarah's not dead. She's happily ensconced in my... Well, I should say her Tuscan villa. Oh. We're divorced. She left me. Sorry. I can't blame her for wanting out. I neglected her, brought it on myself. But it's the betrayal that... I just find it so hard to reach out. I don't think I've trusted another woman since. Well, present company accepted, of course. <laughs> Passing, buying, or being nosy? Had all three tramp through here since that sign went up. So you might as well come in. And you're, uh, you're selling this place? Yep. The divorce. Split the proceeds? Oh, no. My name on the mortgage. 
Skint, up to my eyes in his debt. My husband walked out on me, so I should feel sympathetic. But? I feel sorry for Mrs. Kelly. I heard you and her husband in your shed last night. What big ears you have? You were talking about money and the sale of the allotments and with Professor Mullins being murdered. Hold on. What are you suggesting? Someone wants him out of the way. Someone who has a vested interest in the land. There's plenty of people with better reason to kill old misery guts than me. Wow, it cost you a lot of money. <laughs> Ten grand wouldn't scratch the surface. I'm talking grown-up grudges, Stuart Burnley. The Sandwich King. Oh, the professor hassled him for using his plot for business, but murder. Burnley used to grow a very particular weed on his plot till the old fella sniffed it out a few years back. My husband told me all about it. Mullins called the police. Cannabis is only a caution. Yeah, well, Burnley was on probation. He did time. The old man's been on his case ever since he came out. As you say, doesn't like him using his plot for business. So, if you want someone with a real reason to hate the old man, to want him out of the way, try Burnley, not me. It seemed so inoffensive. He was at Hugo's office selling sandwiches full of condolences. Yes. But she said he'd been to prison and that it was Professor Mullins who put him there. I'd say those were crocodile tears. Here, hold this. I'll be back. Come on, Dad. I said to you mate earlier. I'm sorry about the old fella. Really? Even though he put you in prison? <laughs> yeah, well, he did me a bit of a favour, as it turned out. I learned a few lessons in stir. Plus, you saved this place from going down the tubes. It would have been bad for business. <sighs> Look, I won't lie to you. I sell sarnies to the office wallers. My unit's a good ten miles away. This place is handy for storage. Be seeing you, then. Oh, uh, there you go. It's on the house. Secrets in that shed, and it's not Mars bars. Look at this. It's rampant. But some flowers are still fine. There's no rhyme nor reason. Well, there is. There is a reason now. Look at these early tomatoes. Look at this. Caused by growth regulator. Weed killer. Someone's deliberately poisoning the ground. Yes, but why target particular plants? I mean, that doesn't explain the random spread. Could be in the water. Not Hugo's cheap sprinkler system. That doesn't even reach everywhere. The sprinklers? They must be contaminating the whole system from the feeder tank. And somehow upping the dose, I think. Well, we'll keep a watch out tonight. Stake it out. That's S-T-A-K-E. Keep him. He's a trained guide dog. That's just because you're a cat person. Well, maybe. No cats, no dogs. Seems a fair compromise to me. These investments of the professors, they might as well be hieroglyphics. Well, Hugo understands it. <sighs> Flask's empty. No, I'm fine anyway. I'm not. I wonder if Jangles would fill it for us. Yeah, what with 24D weed killer, probably. Oh, come on. He's got less reason than anybody to pollute the land. Mm, well, he might have killed the professor. I told you what Hugo said. He is way behind Burnley, Kelly and Scott, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to risk it. Stay. <laughs> It very comfortable. You're just surprised it's not a hovel. You're not late, aren't you? Just doing some soil tests. Whatever. Give us your flask. No, 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 it's all right. I don't want to cause you any trouble. But I would like your opinion. I heard you used to be a, a financial expert once. All in the past. Now I just like to be left in peace. So make your tea and... Please, please. 
A friend of mine has come into some money, but her financial advisor says she can't touch it for years. Would you have a look? Don't do this anymore. Rubbish. What? Mumbo Jumbo, smoke and mirror. She could have her money tomorrow. Who put this together? You go, Dainty, the top man. In his dreams. I knew his dad, a good bloke in a poisonous profession. But the son single handedly brought dainties to his knees when he took over. Oh, I thought he oversaw the merger with Takasoni. Rosemary said. Merger? The Japs bought dainties for a quid. Frank Dainty would have wept. But Hugo's still there. Takasoni wanted to keep the dainty name. I guess keeping Hugo on was the price. Makes me laugh to see him swanning around here. Why don't you say anything? Fool he may be, but he could still have me evicted. Luckily, he enjoys seeing me like this. But if Hugo Dainty's managing your friend's money, the weed killer in the drum. Kelly and Scott have been poisoning the land. Still doesn't prove they killed Professor Mullins. I want to check out Burnley first. Crisps. Oh, starving. What one? This is no time to be eating crisps. What flavour are they? Cheese, no, no. sense of humor. Look at that. Must be thousands. Where's it all from? What's that? <gasps> Tracks. Bills. They must have been dealing from here. That's why I didn't want the professor to know. It must be Kelly and Scott coming back to contaminate the tank. Oh, it's Burnley! Oh, bollocks! What are we going to do? Lights, lights. time. I'm, uh, sorry about our little uh, business partnership being a bit of a disaster. I never made any promises when you put up your dosh. You can have the rest of the consignment if you like. It's not much. Don't be daft. Put it away.
They ran away. I couldn't see who it was. How's... Well, put it this way. I think we can safely rule out Mr. Burnley. If you remember anything else, call the instant room. Why won't you listen? Look, this is linked with the land being poisoned and to Professor Mullins' murder. The sweet pea slaying. I'll bear that background in mind. It's not background. It's the key to all this. People are playing for big stakes here. There was a lot of money in that shed last night. We saw it. And it's not there now. Stuart Burnley was a drug dealer. Yes. And he'd been peddling some dodgy gear lately. We take bullets out of his sort for fun. It's a dangerous trade. One of you ladies be well advised to keep your distance from in the future. Can you believe his attitude? How can anyone be so bloody blinkered? Years of training. Anyway, if he won't nail Kelly and Scott, we will. Come on. No, I can't now. I'm having lunch with Hugo. But you're still going? After all I told you? I can't condemn someone on the say-so of a scruffy loon. Well, at least ask some of the questions he told you to. Well, maybe. Oh, who's being blinkered now? OK, OK, I'll ask. And don't let him calculate the bill. It seems the Feng Shui chaps threw a tantrum, so I'm stuck in here for another couple of weeks. Well, maybe he got out of bed the wrong side. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I had a look at the papers you gave me, and I have some questions about accessibility. And fortunately, I have some answers for you. I managed to freeze some of the interest on your money. Excuse the vulgarity of ready cash. There's 2,000, if you'd be kind enough to sign for it. Jolly good. Oh, Hugo, I'm going to need some more. Well, there are the uh, funeral expenses and um, legal costs and God knows what else. Yes, yes, of course. Well, lunch on me, I think. Restaurants down here. I want to feed your imagination first. <sighs> Mr. Kelly, your weed killer is lethal, not to mention illegal. What are you talking about? You were seen last night with Paula Scott bringing a drum of weed killer onto these allotments. <sighs> and I think. Whoever contaminated the land killed Professor Mullins and Burnley, too. Don't be soft. Sure he couldn't even kill a spider. It was you, or your girlfriend, Paula, because you needed the land and she needed the money. She... She was threatened to tell my missus about our affair. Blackmail? No. Well, sort of. But we're still... I'm still... I know she was only doing it because she was skint. This is good soil, and you poisoned it just to get hold of the land and make money out of it. We didn't poison the allotment. Come on, Derek, tell her. Why defend that pompous prat? Face facts, man. You're not going to get the land. I'm not going to get my money. Oh, Jesus. Why is he looking so smart? I need to talk to your friend. Why? After last night, I had to find out what Hugo was up to. I went to Takasone Dainty. I've got some friends there, very high up. What did they say? Hugo doesn't know it, but he's under internal investigation, financial irregularities, huge losses. The idiot's trying to bust dainties all over again. Your friend has got to get her money out. What do you think? This will be my living room, a uh, galley kitchen over there, three bedrooms. A handsome pied a terre. Oh, several pieds, I should think. <laughs> it's very large. Yes, too large for one, I think. I have my house in the country. I've always been at the Carpe Diem school. These past few days with you have made me very happy. Imagine yourself living here. I want you to be my wife. 
All right. Hugo came to me and we agreed the sale. He knew about this charter thing, but he wasn't sure if anyone else did. We knackered the land as insurance, just in case there was a vote. I supplied the weed killer, but he did all the sabotage, I swear. So he was the saboteur? And it was him with Burnley last night. He killed him. And Professor Mullins. We had nothing to do with any murders. He's with Rosemary. If she demands her money, she'll be threatened to bring down his entire house of cards. I just saw them. Over the other side of the building site. Call the police. Well, perhaps I should think about it. I mean, I'm, I'm not rejecting you, Hugo. Well, yes, I am. I like you a lot. It's just that I, I don't know you, let alone love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm brash of me. Look, um, the smaller apartments in the upper stories, would you at least take a look with me? After you. Hugo! Why did you have to say no? All I needed was control of Mullins' funds. You could have skipped the other bars. Now I'll have to call the lift. You killed the professor. He retired. Thought I kept his money under the mattress. I tried to tell him investments don't work like that, but he could have caused a lot of trouble, like you. You needed the cash from the land sale to buy him off. But what about Burnley? Did you kill him too? The drug deal promised a quick return, money to buy breathing space. But it all went wrong again. Oh, so you are a fraud. And a failure. I'm Hugo Dainty. I will not be sidelined in my own company, wheeled out to abuse foreign clients like a performing seal. You're crazy. I'll scream the place down. The builders will hear. In their lunch hour. Pub's over a mile away. You're a fool. People know I'm with you. Building sites are dangerous places. Going down. Hugo! Oh, here. Come on, take me. I'm sure you'd have made a fine, Mrs. Dainty. No matter. Thankfully, the receipt you signed makes over the money to me. You'll have to excuse me. I'm rather squeamish. Goodbye. Laura! Rosemary! Stop! A wise decision, Hugo. Call it a basis for negotiation. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm wary of dealing with you. We've just come from Takasonis. Dainties. Just like old times. 18 million quid down and counting. Ah, oh, Jangles, father's favorite. Did you never wonder how your wife found out about your affairs? Simple phone call. <laughs> Reflection. I don't think I'll change my mind about your proposal. Oh, it. Oh, goodness me. Oh, goodness me. Oh, God. Oh, God.
professor would have approved. Mm. He certainly tended his blooms better than Hugo, who tended his cash. Money would have been nice. Oh, well, easy come, easy go. <laughs> and Hugo was decidedly easy go. Come on, Tavares, come on. I'm glad you didn't marry him. Uh -huh. That really would have been three's a crowd. <laughs> oh, look. I know you want to keep him. Ever since he saved my life, he's been growing on me. Yes, but, um, the, um, oh! Hi. Hello, I'm Fiona Brown. Yeah, Laura Time. We spoke on the phone. Yes. Hello. I've come for a... <laughs> oh, this is goodbye, kid. Is he going to a good home? Oh, the best. He'll live out his days at our sanctuary. Comfortable kennels, open fields to roam, as much food as he can eat. He'll have the life of Riley. Okay. Good boy. <laughs> Come on, then. Come on, Tiberius. Come on. In you go. Good boy. Oh. You didn't have to do that. <sighs> A sanctuary. Do you wish we'd kept him? No. I wish I was going with him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>